Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth with The Way Ministries, and this is Anthony Hill. And you are watching Through the Eyes of an Elder. This is a new series that we have started, and we're hopeful that it's going to be beneficial to those who are watching it. And as elders in the body of Messiah of Yahshua HaMashiach, we, uh, we've spent many years, haven't we, Anthony? Yes. Looking yes. at different kinds of problems that we've been associated with in different places that we've been at and we've experienced a lot of things over the years and we've learned through the ups and downs of these various experiences and uh, but before we get into that what I want to do is uh, I want to kind of start off by saying that I want to thank my brother Anthony because it really was his idea to start this project I wasn't thinking about this at all I was thinking about doing something else but when he approached me on this I was very convicted immediately as to the fact that this is something we definitely need to do. And I've been trying to get you behind the camera for quite some time anyway. And so here we are, our first broadcast on this, uh, this project. And so when he approached me on this, uh, right away, Yahweh gave me a vision for the title, which you see here on the screen, Through the Eyes of an Elder. It's a unique vision. It's a vision by those who've been around for a long time and have experienced a lot of things in the body of Messiah. And um, as you get older, you do tend to gain some wisdom out of what you experience. And so he gave me this idea, and so I put this together. But he did something else. He also said to me that there's an example in Scripture, which I did a message on a couple of years ago. It was... Um, something about the hearts. I forgot the name of it right now, but it's, it's up on YouTube. You can watch it. Um, and he will turn the hearts. That's what it was. Yeah. And I'm going to take a little excerpt from that, a couple of scriptures to illustrate the point. And I also want to make stress right now that this uh, series that we're going to be doing, because we're going to be doing different subjects over a period of time, and none of what we say is, although as hard and as difficult as we might say it sometimes, is ever intended to condemn anybody. This is not about condemnation. This is really about edification. This is about trying to come up to a higher level of righteous walk with Messiah Yahshua HaMashiach and people who are in the faith with you. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to take a part of that teaching and this is the inspiration that I had for this series. And so this is going to start off in Ezra, chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. And I don't know how many of you have seen this, but it caught my eye, which was the genesis of that teaching that I had done several years ago. And what it's, let me lay a foundation, I guess is what I should do. So what happened is the, the Jews had come back to Jerusalem from being um, exiled. And when they came back, it was approaching the uh, Yom Teruah, the Feast of Yom Teruah, and they wanted to lay the foundation for the second temple. And so what was happening is all the people were out on the streets and they were celebrating and playing music, their instruments, and shouting for joy. And so that's kind of where we're breaking in here. And then I'll expound on that as we kind of go along here. So in verse 10, it says, When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of Yahweh, the priests stood in their apparel and with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with symbols to praise Yahweh according to the ordinance of the king of David of Israel. In verse 11 it says, And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to Yahweh, for he is good, for he is, his mercy endures forever towards Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout as a battle cry when they praised Yahweh because the foundation of the house of Yahweh was laid. But many of the priests and the Levites and heads of the fathers' houses of old, and this is what I want you out there to pay attention to, who are elders, who had seen the first temple. They saw the first temple. These other people that were celebrating didn't see that first temple. Yeah. So they had nothing in which to compare. Okay, What we're trying to do is we're trying to bring out things that you can compare to when we go through these discussions. And we're just going to kind of put our hearts out there to see what can be given to you through our experience. 
And unfortunately, in this story here, the youth in the faith over here in Israel did not consult with their elders. And the story didn't end very well, but we're not going to go down that far. We're just going to touch on this here. Who had seen the first temple wept with bemoaning complaints, with a loud battle cry, alarming voice, when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes, yet many shouted for joy. Verse 13, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping that was overflowing of the people, for the people shouted with a loud shout to the point of splitting the ears, and the sound was heard afar off. So you have two groups that are shouting for joy. And let me get this other scripture up here, verse 13, okay? And so what happened is you've got these two groups that are shouting for joy. Or one of them shouting for joy and the other one is complaining. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you've been an elder, and I, you are, we've been around for many years, you'll know what I'm talking about. You watch what the youth and the faith do. Mm -hmm. And you see the folly and the foolishness of it. And it grieves you in your heart because you know where that road is, where that person is going. And you know that where they're going is going to be a whole lot of heartache. And they don't want to consult with you and they don't want to know anything that you want to say that could spare them the trouble. And that, that's really the reason why I felt Yahweh said grab this set of scriptures because this illustrates exactly the, the problem that we deal with when dealing with people who don't want to hear the wisdom of elders who see things from a perspective that they already went down that road and they didn't have, you don't have to experience all that. But human nature being what it is, people are going to have to experience what they're going to have to experience anyway. So it kind of um, concludes in Haggai. It says, Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is it not in your eyes as nothing? See, the bottom line is these elders. They saw the first temple. They saw the Shekinah glory coming out of this first temple. And they knew the miracles that had happened with Solomon's temple. And they knew before this thing was even built, Yahweh had put into their hearts that this second temple was going to in no way, shape, or form going to be anything like that first temple. They knew ahead of time. So Yahweh imparts wisdom and understanding to elders that he doesn't do with the youth of the faith. So it's our hope and our aspirations through this series of uh, discussions that we're going to have on these different subjects mm -hmm. that those who are listening to this can glean something from this. And, and if any of you feel like you have a subject that you want to talk about that we haven't covered, please shoot us a, a line or something and we'll evaluate it and see if there's something there that we can work with and we'll be happy to, to put that up. So that pretty much covers my inspiration part of what I got out of what you had imparted to me about what you wanted to do with starting this project. And so now I'm going to turn it over to you and let you go ahead and, and run through what you feel that you want to speak on, on your inspiration of what caused you to, to pitch this to me in the first place. Yes. Greetings and shalom in the name of our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. Um, I'm excited, brother. <laughs> Uh, sort of like Moses, when Yahweh first spoke to him, nervous, but excited and willing to take the mantle, not understanding where it was going and how it's going to manifest itself. I'm willing to take the mantle. So I like to thank Yahweh for you and for you um, presenting it and giving you the wisdom to lay this platform out so we can pour our hearts out to his people and many years ago um, I was in trouble and I went to prison and, and I was moved to this cell and I was in a cell by myself and I had a dream and the book of Jonah opened and it went to the part where I, I was in the belly of the great fish. And 
it wasn't really I. It's like he had me seeing what he had Jonah entrapped in. And I could see the pages of the Bible open and it went to Jonah uh, chapter 2. And, and I can read it so clearly in this dream, Jonah's prayer. And it was a prayer of repentance which really and truly touched me then, you know, because in that dream, I was praying the prayer. And after the prayer was finished, the book closed, and the officers was knocking on the door to move me. Hmm. And it took me to a place where I didn't want to go, a place to preach repentance, a place to... uh where I had to really receive the preaching of Jonah that was held back from me so many years from Hasatan. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would, no, no matter what trouble I would be in, I always had another way out besides repentance. And last year, John knows this, that um, I had a health issue and I couldn't understand why this thing came upon me when I was, I thought I was doing everything that Yahweh wanted me to do. And I would petition him just to speak to me and, and, and allow me to hear him. And in the process, he gave this, this vision to me and I couldn't really see it. But the only person I knew to call was John <laughs> and just give John this idea on what he was giving me. And he, he showed me that that vision I had 20 something years ago was applying now. You don't have a lot of time to do things for Yahweh. So you have to do it when you're called to do it. And I had been sitting idle for years. John just mentioned something. He's been trying to get me up here <laughs> to speak for years. And I've been sitting idle and would not answer the call. And this last year, when I was afflicted, it shook me because it came out of nowhere. And I thought that was my last day on this earth. And that I felt this, this feeling inside that I had left here incomplete it was something that i needed to do and i didn't do it and i wanted more time to do it and so i don't hesitate now to sit here humbly humbly to share my journey and my teachings from beginning to now and so i, I just want to thank john for this opportunity uh to gain and to glean some of the wisdom and experience that he has and to mentor me and help me sit here today and maybe with the spirit of Yahweh we can reach and touch people's heart in a manner that would lead them to the place that we both came from a place of true <coughs> repentance and I'll just Turn it back over to John and let him um, continue to open up the message for you guys. Okay. Well, I'm honored, and uh, it took a while, but you did respond, and I thank <laughs> Yahweh for that. Praise it Yahweh. It took a, a quite an event to make that happen, but yes. hopefully we don't have no more of those because yes. that was a little scary. Oh, yes. But uh, praise Yahweh. He pulled you out of it, and uh, there's no sign that anything was ever even wrong. Yes. Even though it looked like in the natural there was. Yes. So... Uh, what we're going to do is, today is the name of the, um, or the subject matter is laying down the foundation of friendship manifested through love. Laying down the foundation of friendship manifested in love. And um, I'm like, wow, I didn't think you were going to come to me with that one. But mm -hmm. one of the first things that, that came to my mind when you did was... Uh, one of the last series that I had done, which is the whole epistle of John. And I remember I had said in there that, wow, by the time I got through, I think chapter 
four or so, something like that. I don't remember what it was. I said, week after week, I had no idea how I'm going to speak on another aspect of love. Because yeah. that whole series is about love. And I didn't know there were so many different ways to talk about love. So it was very surprising to me. That came back to me when uh, you had proposed this to me. So I had asked you, you know, to pick some scriptures that you wanted to uh, bring out. And then you're going to elaborate on them. And I'll kind of chime in where I feel led by the Ruach to do that. And uh, what we're going to do is tap off some of our... Uh, experiences you've been in the faith for at least 23 years yeah so you've been around the mountain several times i've been in this is my 39th year so we've seen a lot together yes. you know yes. and separately so what we're going to do is we're going to start off in john chapter 15 mm -hmm. and we'll go through verse 12 through 15 and when i read the scriptures that you gave to me for for this section here um, what hit me was the archetypical model Mm -hmm. The archetypical model. In other words, what's in these texts for me is there's no greater example of the highest level or standard of righteousness that one can attain to than what's contained in the, these verses that you're going to be talking about. Yes. So um, you can you can either read. Uh, we got a monitor here. You, I don't know if you can see that. You can either read from there or I can read, uh, whichever you want to do. Uh, you, what, what do you feel comfortable with? Uh, you can read it for me, but um, can I um, add something in here really yeah, quick? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the vision he gave me out of the voice that I heard was a subject about true repentance. And when you asked me about uh, coming up with a first topic, um, he, he gave me a vision about a foundation and the foundation was already laid of love. And so he gave me this topic about love as a foundation, you know, uh, truth manifesting itself through love by a true friend. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, you put it in into writing my words, what I was trying to say, and he gave you the wisdom. That's what I like so much about sharing with you because you got this discernment on how to, in this gift that you have, how to lay something out that somebody like me can't really lay it out. And so this was basically like a foundation. I just want people to know that all that we're talking about is truly coming from a place where the love of Yahweh has been poured in our hearts. And it's not a, 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 a condemn, condemnable format, mm -hmm. but it's one that really, really, and prayerfully, I, I, I pray for it with all my heart that Yahweh pricks the hearts of, of many and it will call them to repentance, knowing that this is coming from love. I tell you the truth because I love you. You know, I'm glad you said that because as I'm listening to you, you know, what hit me this morning was, and I'm going to come back to this in a second. What hit me this morning is we've been doing this for years over the phone. Yes. And in person. Yes. Every week, basically. <laughs> we get into these deep, long discussions, and I'm like, when you express something to me the way you see it, I'm like, I never saw it that way. Never saw it that way. Yes. You know, and then you may say the same. And I, and I, what I was thinking is I wish we could have recorded all those discussions because we had some really heavy stuff that yes. came to a conclusion praise that Yahweh. was way beyond what I had ever thought of before. So praise Yahweh for that. Um, yes. Yeah. I think for me in this thing, I think reason why this is so important right now is we've seen so many people that we knew mm -hmm. that we called brothers or sisters in the faith. They're gone. Yes. I don't mean they're dead, but spiritually they're dead. Yes. They're gone. They've gone on. They betrayed you in some kind of way and they've traded in this faith for something else or they've gone out back into the world or whatever. And we've been talking so much about where are these true believers? 
It can't be that we're the only ones that are talking about this stuff. There's got to be other people out there. And when I go on YouTube, I look for discussions and stuff, and I'm just not seeing the essence, like what you're talking about, the foundation of love. Yes. Because so many people misconstrue true friendship in Messiah and don't understand what that love really is. And sometimes love is tough. Yes. It's difficult. Yes. And it, it causes strife and contention. But the only way it really works is when two people can humble themselves. Mm -hmm. But when one is trying to be humble and correct another person, and they don't want to be humble about it, and they want to come back and fuss and fight against you, that creates a lot of problems. And there's no love there when that happens. Yes. And so we're seeing more and more of this division within the body of Messiah. Mm -hmm. And it's for a lot of different reasons, but all the more reason why the foundation of love has to be that foundation for everything you do. Mm -hmm. Even if the other person doesn't want to see it as love and they want to call you a scoundrel, a liar, a deceiver from the devil, they, you know how they, yes. they call us all kind of stuff, you know? But as we go through some of these scriptures today, you're going to see sometimes you got to take some real tough positions with people and you got to be willing to risk losing the friendship. Even with your own children. You got to be willing to risk losing it to stand up for the standard that Yahweh has put in your heart. Because if you give in to the other side, then there's nobody to stand there. Yes. So anyway, with that said, uh, I'll, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll read this. Um, I'll read it, I guess, because this is all kind of an experiment, what we're doing here. Right. I'll read it. If you want me to stop right there, a certain, just say stop. Okay. And then you go ahead and do say what you got to say. Yeah. So in John chapter 15, verses 12 through 15, as I stated, the archetypical type model, uh, it says, This is my commandment as an authoritative prescription that you love in a social and moral sense one another as according to as much as I have loved you. Yes. Yes. You want to stop there? Right there. Okay. Right there is the foundation already laid. We've been commanded to love one another, not just because you nice to me, or you do good things for me. But even when you have to correct me, I still should love you because you cared enough to correct me. That's the foundation. That's it right there. We're it's laid. We can't do nothing but build on it. And the only thing we can build on it with is the only material he gave us. And that's love. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Now that I just heard you say that, what would possess a person to not want you to express love in that way with the correction? It's, it's, it's many things. Uh, uh, we, even though we say we spiritual in a lot of ways, that, that spiritual is always on trial. And it's on trial through the earthly realm. But Yahweh always is there as a banner if we allow him because his word is there to keep us. So if we abide in his word, we'll abide in him. There's nothing that can come upon us that he's not already been through himself. And he went through it because he loved us. And so he loved us enough to say, well, that's a way that I've seen and you shouldn't go that way. That's the way that I've seen people react, and they shouldn't react that way. So in essence, what it, and from my experience, what it comes down to, people don't want to be held to a higher standard. Uh, of course not. They're, they're complacent to stay right where they are, and how dare you call me out? Of course they're not, because the flesh is warring against the spirit. And that is a clear sign that a person is in the flesh in that moment. Exactly. And it's easy. Don't none of us get beside ourselves, like it's so difficult for us it's easy i found myself enraged sometimes mm -hmm. and if it wasn't for the mercy of yahweh to put barriers in my way how many times like balaam Balaam, how many times did that donkey tried to stop him before Yahweh put the last thing a sword, huh? open his <laughs> eyes up. How many times have we huh, 
been trying to pass a, a point where Yahweh is saying, don't you go any further. How many times that we did that and would truly admit it? You did that many times. You call so me on many. the phone and you say, John, I got to talk to you. I go, what, what do you got to talk to me about? <laughs> oh, man. Yahweh got on my case today and he told me, even though I wasn't happy with my wife, you're going to call your wife and you're going to say this and say that. <laughs> That's not a call you well, wanted to make, but, but you do it anyway. Yeah. You know, Thank and you, the bro. same thing happens to me too. You know, sometimes I get into trouble with my wife and I'm like, I got to go back and fix it. If I don't fix it, the, the punishment is going to be worse from him than it is from my wife. My wife is a lot easier on me. So, uh, yeah. So then my experience has been, now I wanted to play the other side of that coin just for just a moment. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I don't like to paint a broad brush for just about anything. Right. Um, there is another side to this. Yes. The way I see it. And that is, let's say some brother or sister comes to you and they take up issue with something that they perceive that you did or said, or was involved in. Um, the first thing that you really have to do is you have, like you say, have humility mm -hmm. and you've got to sit there and you've got to listen to the essence and the core of what that person is saying. Now, somewhere in the recesses of your mind, if the Ruach is working with you, you should then be able to stop and say, okay, I clearly understand what you're saying to me. However, when I analyze the very story that you're telling me or what you're accusing me of, I wasn't there. I didn't do it. Somebody told you a lot. I'm talking about if you're really honest with yourself now. Yeah. Let's say you were not guilty. but th And I've had it happen many times, probably more so than the other ways. Uh, they come to me and they accuse me of stuff. I wasn't there. I didn't do it. I didn't say it. But I'm guilty as charged. Whoa. So that's the other side of this issue. Is It's not just if somebody comes to you and and accuse you of something, and you really are guilty of it, you know, and how you got to handle that. But what happens when somebody comes to you, and they say something to you and accuse you of something that you know you didn't do it, you know? Because mm -hmm. that happens a lot also. At least that's been my experience. Yes, I found out that to be the case many a times that uh, I try to fight that battle and immediately get on the defense. I'm going to defend me. And over the, over the course of time, you know, we have to stand up for what's right. If, 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 if we done nothing wrong, we have to stand on what we done. But I'll give you one case. Um, on my job, I have associates that um, will say, well, he really talked to me disrespectful. And he yelled at me. He screamed at me. Now, I didn't perceive that. And it, it, it took me to a place when they confronted me with it, or we was confronted with the people that I had to immediately say, well, that wasn't my intent, you know, um, and I apologize to you if I uh, disrespected you in that way or you, uh, I offended you, but that wasn't my intent. My intent was a corrected method, which that's me. That's mm -hmm. what I do. You know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking everybody should know that's me, you know. And so when you do something that I don't like, this is me. This is how I do it. And I say, but uh, I'm going to consider the things that you don't like. Would you please consider the things that I don't like? It's only fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to accuse me of something that I didn't do without coming to me first and ask me you, and telling me, say, man, you really, you really offended me before you take it to somewhere else. Come to me and I can, I can be the one to straighten it and let you know that wasn't my intent. That was the message. I'm sorry you received it that way. So they're busy, busy listening to the volume and not the message. Yeah. And I fall into the trap yeah. sometimes myself, you know, that's why I say, uh, don't none of us get above ourselves. Don't think that Hasatan is not so clever. The Bible tells us he's diabolically clever. Mm -hmm. And so don't think 
that we're always ahead and in control because the moment we do, that's when we get a little crack for him to creep in. And then like we just got out of the feast on a little living. Yeah. It puffs up the whole lump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and before we know it, it spread it. Yeah, it happens quick, doesn't it? Yes. I've seen it blow up like a wildfire real quick. Anything else on this particular oh, verse? No, no, All sir. right, we'll go on to the next one. So in verse 13, it says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends, who is dear and affectionately fond of. Yes. Uh, I, I, know, I know for me, I don't know if anybody can identify with me. We got friends out there that before we come to them with what we have learned, we'll brush it off because we don't want to, we, in our natural mind, we think we're going to kill a friendship if we, because they're going to perceive we're trying to change them. Mm. No, I'm trying to enlighten you of something that I experienced, that I know you in that way, and what I got can lead you out of that way. The information that I just went and studied and learned through an experience. You're talking about people in the world. People in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Friends in the world. Yeah. You know, and if you really think about it, I want to go to the world first. Many of us who call ourselves friends in the faith, we have the same type of characteristics as the friends in the world with one another because we can't, we're afraid to come and correct somebody and say, well, uh, I'm always told if you don't have anything good to say, then don't say nothing at all. Well, when you're telling somebody something that they're doing wrong ain't going to be good no time mm -hmm. because who wants to hear that they're wrong? Who truly wants to hear it? Sweep it under the rug and let's continue our relationship. It's the, it's the um, norm. Do you find that um, this is a, a paradox that I find? I feel a little bad about it sometimes. I've got friends out in the world that I've known for many years, you know, before I came into faith or even after I came into faith. They're out in the world. They're nice people. They're mm -hmm. pretty good people. They're respectable. But they don't have any interest really in what I believe. And the, the accusations I get, which is it's totally true, I'll be honest about it, is I don't see you no more. I don't hear from you. We don't spend time together like we used to, you know. And it's hard for me to, um, to talk to them about that in a way other than I'm very busy, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I run a business which that in itself is is consumes a lot of my time but then when I, my private time i need to spend time with my wife and my grandkids and my kids or whatever but um the other half of my life in a way is ministry so it's like you know it's hard to find a balance how are you going to see all these people and go out rubbing shoulders with them when they don't really have an interest in your faith, but they're drawn to be around you for some reason. I still don't know why, who, why they want to be around me, but, but they'll tell me, uh -huh. you know, we miss, we don't see you anymore, blah, 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 you know? And it's like, I, sometimes it's really hard to, to tell them. In essence, it's given the impression that you're not worth my time. And I don't really want it to be said that way because it's not that way. It's just that I have so many other things in my life I'm busy with I have to prioritize. <laughs> I'm just a human, you know? Yes, I can identify with that 100%. And I'm always telling, well, I'm always working. And when I'm not working, I'm home resting. Sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I, I've, I've come to the place where, um, you know, I don't mind uh, keeping company or fellowshipping with you or visiting you. But it's going to be a limit on the things we're going to talk about, the nature of mm -hmm. the things we talk about, because I don't want to visit the old. Right. You know, right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm in a new way now. And if, if, if you want to come and we could talk about new stuff, you know, let's bury the old because Yeshua has buried the old mm -hmm. and, it, and it's gone, you know, in my life, you know, because a lot of the old stuff, and what we call good times <coughs> were destructive times. Right, right. And, and in the mind that I have now, how could I ever call such a thing a good time? 
Yeah. You know, right. when it was destroying me. But that's the mindset that my friends want to take me back in and in, in right. glory in. I don't glory in that. I repented from that because I did it in my ignorance. Right. And I don't want to go back to that. That's 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 just foolishness to me. And I had to come to the place where I was even brave enough and had enough courage to tell them the truth. That didn't break up my friendship with a lot of them, but it sure stopped them mm -hmm. from wanting to be around me when I told them that these are the things I want to talk about. You know, I could talk about a little sports with you, but I'm not going to talk sports all day. No. no. I could talk about world events with you, but I'm not going to talk about world events all day. Give me some time to talk about the lover of my soul. Mm -hmm. Just give me some time. It ain't going to take long. I'm not going to take much of your time up with that as much as you want to take up mine mm -hmm. with the world. But just give me a little bit of time and we can meet on some equal ground. But I still love you. That won't stop you. But if I love you truly, as the topic is about, then I must tell you the truth, no matter how hard it is. Yeah, I, I sometimes I think that's wise. Um, I think there's something in those kinds of people mm -hmm. that they see something in you that draws them. They may not know, know exactly what it is, what it is mm -hmm. but they're not abhorrently against you, and yes. and they want to be around you because they're, they they feel a certain way when they're around you. I don't know if it's because they can trust themselves with you. You're not a threat to them. You're not condemnational to them. You know, because Scripture says we don't judge the Gentiles, right. you know, the, the unbeliever. Yes. Um, although there are times where you may have to say a word or two when somebody's out of control. But, um, but I think what you said is wise. And I think what you have to do at the end of the day is you have to prioritize your life. And you have to set the standard of this kind of engagement. Because I remember when I was younger, I used to spend a lot of time with people out there and they keep me out all day long. Mm -hmm. And then whatever it is that they wanted to do, it never wound up manifesting into anything. And I looked back, I said, I lost like three months of time hanging out with these people and it didn't achieve anything. It was just a time killer. So I think you have to be a committee of one to decide for yourself is this moving you in a direction where you need to go or, or are they moving you in a direction where they want to go? It, it's that, about who's in control, you know? That's exactly, I mean, it, I, I'm, I can see right now while we're sitting here through my, through my eyes, your experience and your journey. And I'm praying that the hearers today would see through our eyes the journey that we're talking mm -hmm. about. Not, and, and perhaps you are on that same road you know, because a word came to me, value. And I used to, right. as illegal of life and destructive life I used to live, if somebody I perceived was living a better life, I would be honored to be in their presence because it, it gave me some kind of sense of value or worth just to be around them so people right. wouldn't see me as a bad person. Right. Oh, if he's hanging with that person there, he can't be all bad. Mm -hmm. And I would be accepted, but I was bad. <laughs> I was corrupted. I was rotten. But I, anything I can use for people not to see my rottenness, I would use it as a prop. It was wrong. And I'm thankful that Yahweh's love brought me to a place to show me no matter how rotten I was, he was ready to cut it all out with his word. Mm -hmm. That's love. Right. That's the foundation of love. It's late. That's why we're sitting here today. No, you can't be no more rotten than we were. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can promise you, you can't even get any rotten. You might have done different things, but the same results was right. there. We were right. rotten to the core. It's a seed. It was deep. Yeah, it's a seed. <laughs> it man. was deep. But the word, the love, went out one day and laid itself down. So that John and I can sit here today. We didn't see it 
39 years ago, mm -mm. 40 years ago. But it's here today, love manifesting itself. And you know what? He even still, even now, lets us get away with being rotten from time to time. Yes, yes. And that's the grace, you know, of walking in it, you know. And, you know, people try to say, oh, you Torah keepers, you commandment keepers, there's no grace in that. Oh, that's a lot of hogwash. Oh, yes. You don't, the whole book is about grace. Yes, it but is. But for those who don't keep the commandments in the Torah, you would have no idea what you're missing. Oh, yes. None whatsoever. You don't understand. We got people I see out there, Christians, that try to talk about what real love is and all that stuff. You ain't got no clue. You got no clue. Yes. Uh, it's really sad um, when people who haven't experienced something think that they have the uh, the experience and they really don't. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move on yes. to chat, uh, verse 14. It says, uh, you are my friends. Mm hmm if you do whatever I command by actively enjoining himself to it through you. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Repent. That's what a true friend is. Don't offend me anymore. Don't hurt me no more. How many times did my wife in the first life plead with this rebellious and disrespectful, adulterous person to stop it? Only somebody that cared about you would ask you to stop hurting them. And he could not hear it. He just couldn't hear it. We got many in the faith today. Same way. Why do you deal so treacherous with your wife? Right. Why do you deal so harshly with your husband? Why do we do it? And you know what? your wife or your husband, whichever the case may be, mm -hmm. really should be your best friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of anybody else, because people come and go through like a department store of your life, in and out the front door and the back door, you mm -hmm. know? But when it comes to your mate, that should be the one. And yet that is the one, it's interesting you bring it up, that I find over and over again when it comes to men, mm -hmm. they don't get it. They just don't get it. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a long time to understand that in order for Yahweh to prosper you, Mm -hmm. in all areas of your life is you better not be beaten up on your wife. Yes. I don't mean physically. I mean verbally, mm -hmm. emotionally, and every which other way. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. He will not do it. I mean, you brought Malachi. That's yes. what he says in there. Yes. You've dealt treacherously with the wife of your youth. Oh, yes. And I bucked, and I, even though I read it a million times, I bucked in a fight. But I'm right. Yes. I'm right. Yes. I know what I'm telling my yes. wife. I'm right. Well, you know what? Sometimes yes. you can be technically right and spiritually wrong. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So if you want to be technically right, mm -hmm. you go on and keep being technically right. And you're going to be poor. You're going to be blind, miserable, naked, wretched, every which adjective I could put on that thing. And your marriage is not going to work. Oh, yes. Because you're a, you have a covenant of your youth with her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other way around. I hear there are women that are abusive with a husband, too. Yes. But I, that's the exception to the rule. Uh -huh. So you got anything you want to say about that? No, sir. No, we can move on. Yes. So let's see here. Verse 15. No longer do I call or describe you as servants, for a servant does not know what his master, who is the supreme authority, is doing. But I have called you friends, who is dear and actively fond of, for all the things I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. Listen, I'm telling you, he's moving people from glory to glory. Anthony, I'm telling you, what I know because you're a friend. You're not my servant anymore. My testimony, I just want to serve you. I just want to be your servant. Just give me a place in your vineyard to be your servant. Yes, I am a servant, but now I want to move you to be a friend. And I want you to know what I'm doing with you. I'm moving you out here so you can be a help. But if I can't pull this love in you, then you can't be my friend because that's what I'm all about. Love. And love beareth no evil. Love does not puff itself up. Love is not jealous. Love ain't all in prophecies. Love ain't in speaking in tongues. 
But love is laying your life down. Right now, we, we put our lives aside to sit here and pour out some love. We could easily be just sitting around in here mm -hmm. praising Yahweh like we the greatest thing on earth. Yeah. But we had to put ourselves aside mm -hmm. to pick up this, 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 this mantle and build on something that's already been laid. We're, we, it's nothing new that we're doing. Only a friend can get this kind of information. You know, it's interesting. Um, actually, if you read, I think it's, I'm going to say John 14, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. If you read all three chapters, it's amazing stuff in there when you look at the wording very carefully. Yes. And what you discover in there is that you can't get to the Father until you become a friend of Yahshua. Yes. Yes. And there's this misnomer in the body of Messiah that as soon as you accept Yahshua as the Messiah, you have a relationship with the Father. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. You can't get to the Father unless you get approval by the Son first. Oh, yes. It, it's some heavy words in there. If you really look at it from that perspective, this is what John was trying to get across. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It takes time for the Messiah to trust that you're now his friend and not his servant. Praise. And when you go from being a servant to a friend, now he introduces you to the Father. Yes, yes. Everything in the kingdom of Yahweh is about protocol. Mm -hmm. And you got to know what that protocol is. Now, I'm not saying if you pray to the Father, he don't hear you. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a deep, friendship relationship with the father where you hear him speaking to you and directing things in your life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through his son yes because that's the protocol yes. he doesn't cut his son out of the picture but he gets involved yes he does and it takes years to get to that understanding and that kind of a relationship mm-hmm mm-hmm so anyway, I don't want to go any more into that because that's a really deep subject anything yes, else you is. want to shed on no, this one sir. all right let's move on so uh, you also chose Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. It says, a man who has friends must himself be friendly. You, but you, there, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And it, to me, that was, that was really deep right there. Because nobody can have friends if they're not a friendly person. And for the life of me, uh, I hear it from uh, May a lot. Everybody thinks you so tight. And you so mean. <laughs> she say, but they don't really know you. No, they don't. That's like what my I wife says, you. too. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I want to put on this face where I'm approachable and I'm kind, you know. But what they see, I don't know what they see if they don't see the works, you know. And Yeshua say, the works that I do, they speak for me. So what is it that I'm doing that's making a person perceive that I'm not friendly. Even a con artist has a smile on his face and he's approachable. Exactly. <laughs> and so so years ago, uh, when I was in the world, I had friends and they would introduce me to other friends. Oh, if you're a friend of his, then you could be my friend. Only to be kidnapped. Hmm. Only to be held hostage with guns to your head by the ones that you say was your friend and they never gave you evidence that they were your friend. I'm saying this because I believe truly that this is evidence. This is the foundation that we're, we're presenting today of love to say that it's, it's, it's love speaking through truth. That's our friendship. That's the only friendship we have to offer. If we tell you the truth, if you stone me for telling you the truth, then stone me. Right. But I have to do it because I love you. I have to do it because the one that did it for me loved me and he got stoned. He got crucified. But his word, his witness is still here today. It, it, no matter how much you would crucify a body, the word prevails. The word prevails. Show yourself friendly. 
and you got a friend. But if you don't show yourself friendly, how can you have a friend? Look at the works. Just look at the works. That's all I'm asking. Look at the works and, and watch the works, the consistency of the works. I, I, I talked to John, uh, uh, like he said, we talk on the phone a lot. I say, John, you can see the love that you have for Yahweh because so many have gone, mm. huh? Yeah. And no matter what you say, you don't want to deal with people and you don't want nothing to do with nobody and you're tired of it, yet you continue to pick it up and keep going and keep listening and keep fighting. That's love. That's the word prevailing over whatever the flesh don't like. The word prevails over it because the spirit is winning. That's friendship. That's a true friend. He has shown himself friendly to me. And I always told him, don't ever pity pat me. If you have to tell me whether I like it or not, tell it to me. But do not pity pat and pat me on the back because that, that won't be helping me. You know what? Um, now that you said that, um, the one thing I can say over the years that we've been tied together in this mm -hmm. thing, um, you're one of the very few, if only, people that I've known that I don't have to do that. Because I know your walk, and I've seen how Yahweh has endorsed you over the years as my friend and my brother. Mm -hmm. And it is so refreshing to not have to correct somebody. Yes. You know? Um, and so you're, you're that rare person. I'm not trying to puff you up. I know you say you don't try to puff me up here. Mm -hmm. I know where you come from when you say it. But um, there's no words to describe when you don't have to correct a brother or sister. Because they're walking as clean as they can. So if I do see you do something or say something, I say to myself in that moment, that, that it can't be the way it looks because I know him. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't jump to the conclusion that I impugn a motive on you that would be wrong because I know your heart. I know you too well that mm -hmm. that now... You could go bad at any day, just yes. like I could go bad yes. at any day. Yes. That can happen. Yes. I, I get that. And we might get off track sometimes for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as a general rule, I know that road you're going down, and I don't have to question that. Yes, yes. Whereas the masses of people that I've met over the years, for, it's a whole different story. It, Unstable as water, you yes, know? Yes, yes. And that's the experience you, you with your... Um, message through the vision that Yahweh gave you through the eyes of an elder through the eyes of an elder you been down the roads that I'm traveling now mm -hmm. and you pretty much know exactly where I'm at in that point of the road it's like I try I used to travel the roads the back roads the highways but I, I know them all by the back of my hand so if somebody called me I, and they lost I can tell them which roads yeah. to take to get back on track and not even be in the car with them right J today they got GPS's to <laughs> rely on but Back then, I didn't have the, so I had to learn the back roads because I trying to stay out of the main highways where uh, eyes would see the inf law enforcement maybe out there <laughs> and, and so forth and so on. So I had to learn alternative routes. Right. But in Yeshua, there's no alternative route. It's only one way you can go if you want to get to to the kingdom. Right. And that's through Yeshua, HaMashiach. And so... As he began to narrow my path, not getting off track, he put me on the path that he already had people walking on. Are you, are you with me? Mm -hmm. and, and so I know, I, I don't know it, but it's, uh, he's put John here, right? And I can get on the phone and I can call John. And John, I might not tell him a lot of times. Man, he, he, he showed... He, he shall know what he's talking about right now because he's been at that point in the road on me before I got there. In this walk in the faith, he's probably been in different places and with different um, spirits more before I got there. So if I can explain the type of person I'm dealing with right now, he could say, well, that, that's that kind of spirit right yeah, there. Yeah. He does that a lot. Yeah. 
All right, so it, the rest of it says uh, that you have affection for uh, who sticks closer by adhering and cleaving than a brother. That's what friends, true friends do. Right. They stick closer than your own brother. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably prefer to be with that friend more than you prefer to be with your own brother. And that is a powerful statement. That is a powerful one to even think about. Uh, why would I rather be with a friend more than a brother? You know, I, 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 I stayed at people who are, I consider friends' houses more than I stayed at my own house. Why would I, um, I got a wife and family home. Why would I want to be in the streets all night and not go home to my wife and kids? Why would I consider them more friends who mm. was so much against me and not have the friends who want to stick with me and of my own blood? Yeah, you know, um, I, I've had this philosophy. It's been like, well, it hasn't always been with me, but when I was much younger, I, I started to learn it. Um my philosophy is you're either a leader or a follower. Yes. I guess I'll if you're a leader, you're the one who sets the path mm -hmm. and how things have to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got a, a, an outside friend, a nice guy. And he's always doing stuff that I don't mean illegal. It just, he does things in a way that it don't work. Mm -hmm. And I always have to constantly protect him from himself, you know? Well, why, why like that? Why like that? And I said, because if I follow your lead, we're both going to go into the ditch. Yes. And I've been in so many ditches in my life, I'm sick and tired of it. You're a lot younger than I am. I don't want to go down that road. I'm tired of being in the ditches. So then I said, if you want to do this, you're going to do it my way. Because I can see you don't know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't have time to waste. I got too many other things to do. So then when I wind up doing it the way that I got to do it, and it comes out the way that it does, he goes, uh, I have to talk to your wife because your wife needs to know how smart you are. You're such a smart guy. Because <laughs> 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 I, I always get bail him out of trouble all the uh, time, which, uh. which that's why he likes to hang around me because I look out for his best interests, unlike a lot of people that he probably deals with. But anyway... Um, Anything else on this particular? Yeah, um, I don't know about you, uh, but for me, that wasn't easy for me to do with the, the friends that I had out there. To no, but that's them. a sign of bondage. Yeah. Uh -huh. It means you're enslaved to them. They're leading you by the neck with a nose ring or whatever, and they're pulling you where they want you to go. Yep, and I, and I, and I'm... And I, and I had to come into that knowledge that I was being separated. Right. You know, uh, because... I was following people so that I can be accepted by them, you know, but, and I was following them into a, a destructive pattern in life, mm -hmm. but we exalted that you became famous by having outside children and several women and a wife that, it, that was famous. That was popular, mm -hmm. you know, but, Yahweh, when he touches you about love, it makes it, uh, you know, it's, it's bad. It's something that you can't digest anymore, you know. And so for me to, to, to come back and be able to tell them that's wrong to put all that stuff down, that was something I wasn't really uh, equipped already to do right then because I still wanted them to see me as this yeah. cool and all right guy, you know. But... Slowly, Yahweh began to draw me away and show me the purpose. But I was like Jonah. I was stubborn. I was not preaching repentance. Mm -hmm. I was. And, I, and, and the reason I wasn't doing it, because his love wasn't really there like I was proclaiming it was there. Because if I loved them, then I would tell them right. the truth, right. you know, about whatever it is they doing right. and not accept it. And... I'm telling you, last year with this 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 attack on my health, it it showed me that 
I better get to work. <laughs> I better put my hands on the plow and stop looking back. Yeah. You know. And yeah, that was your wake up call. That was your defining moment. At that, we all had them. The first time was the wake up call, mm -hmm. but I got complacent. Mm -hmm. It was all about me and not about others. You know, the loss, the lost sheep. It's, it's got to be about the loss. Yeah, you know, the, you know I, that's a. Uh, I can co totally concur with what you're saying because there are many times when Yahweh wants me to do something and I'm like, my flesh is either tired or it's not uh, up to it mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's like hard to get motivated to do it. That's really a whole nother subject. Don't want to detract from right, staying right. on focus. What we're talking about here. Anything else you want no, to cover sir. on this no, one? Sir. All right, let's move on to the next one. So, uh, you had said, you know, you get some scriptures. So these are the scriptures that I'm coming up with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I want, I'm kind of, Still, it's still love. I don't want to depart from that because mm -hmm. that, that really is the focus of this thing. Right. But going back to the Old Testament, Yahweh has some very, very harsh, what seems to be very harsh ways of dealing with a brother. Yes. That, that's not doing right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to be able to take that concept and apply it to New Testament standard. So what I picked was Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 6 through 10, and I've got some other... Uh, that we'll go through. And again, I'm going to read, and then if you want to stop and, and elaborate on something, just give me a shout, mm -hmm. and I'll stop right there. So it says, If your brother, the son of your mother, your son or your daughter, the wife of your bosom, or your friend, who is your as your own soul, secretly entices you, saying, Let us go and serve to be in bondage as a transgressing worshiper of other Elohims, which you have not known or have an understanding of, neither you nor your fathers. Of the Elohims of the people which are all around you, near to you or far off from you, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. You shall not consent or acquiesce to him or listen with obedience to him, nor shall your eye of favor and humility have pity to cover over with compassion on him, nor shall you spare him or conceal with a covering of secrecy of him. Boy, have I known so many times over the years where that's exactly what people in the body of Messiah do. Mm -hmm. Shh, you know, don't let anybody know this is what he's doing. This is what he's up to. I've seen it, mm -hmm. you know. He, he does this, he does that, whatever the case may be, you know. You're not doing him any service. I'm not saying you should be gossiping. Right. What you really should be doing is Matthew uh, 18, I think it is. You go to your brother mm -hmm. and you tell him his fault. Yes. Tell him his fault. You know, you you shouldn't be gossiping around because Yahweh don't like gossiping either, you know. Yes. But see if you can correct that man right there. Yes. But don't conceal it. You're not doing him any favor. And actually, if you think about it, legally speaking... You're an accessory to the crime if you do see it and you say nothing. Oh, yes. And those are hard choices sometimes because there's times that I had to really battle with things that I knew. Okay? I'll give one example, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I don't want if the people see it, they feel condemned because that's not, as we stated, this is not our point. Mm -hmm. But experiences are still experiences, and these people are still functioning the same way. Okay? They would come and they'd be lying about stuff and they think nobody knew they were lying. Mm -hmm. And I got to see a whole lot more than what other people got to see. Yes. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I'm burning up inside. I'm mad. Because these people are taking not only the other people around me for fools, which they weren't, because mm -hmm. they knew what these people were doing. Mm -hmm. They just didn't say anything. Mm hmm and I knew what they were doing, plus I knew all the other stuff they were doing. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh wouldn't let me say a word. And I'm puzzled because we know what the scripture says. If you got a fault with your brother, you go to your brother. Mm -hmm. But there are times when Yahweh holds your tongue for some unknown reason mm -hmm. to your friends. Mm -hmm. And it's a battle. Because in your mind, in your conscience, you, you feel like you should say something, but he's saying you stay quiet. 
When I want you to say something, I'll tell you. Yes. Now, why could that be? Well, it could be because he's either given them enough rope so they hang themselves. Because mm -hmm. that's the kind of people they are. Mm -hmm. Which in this case, I believe that to be the case. Or, and or, he's given them enough time to maybe think about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And give you a chance to repent. And sure enough, there came a day when I was minding my own business and something came across my path by one of these people that was doing the wrong. And Yahweh says, now you let loose and you let them have it. <laughs> and I let loose and I let them have it. Very and well. all hell broke loose at that point, And they're in the same state as they are today. Yes, praise Yahweh. A strange. I don't. I don't praise for it, mm -hmm. but I do praise for the wisdom mm -hmm. that Yahweh had given me, even though it seemed to defy Scripture. You can't put Yahweh into a box. No sir. You can't measure him out. Mm -mm. He's immeasurable. He ha his wisdom and his thoughts are far beyond our wisdom and thoughts. Oh yeah. His ways are greater than our ways. Yes. Don't think that you can you can second guess exactly every single situation in relationships exactly how you're supposed to do it. Yes, yes. I I'm a witness. I'm I'm right in that mold. <laughs> I I come from that mold that had to be broke. You know, I'm I'm thankful that he he broke it and gave me another chance to be here. You know, he didn't have to do that, but I was one that needed that rope to hang itself, mm. you know, and he did it. And I'm telling you, he did it. He, he hung me, but he did not let me die. Right. And yeah. for you, it was the best thing that could have happened. Yes. For you. Yes. And yes. it always is. The problem is whether or not those people embrace it or not. Exactly. But their pride doesn't let them embrace it. Exactly. Uh, part of my testimony I give in the prison is that, um, you know, I don't, I don't claim to be any better than anybody that I walk with in that life. And a lot of them gone. It, I would just happen to be doing something else. I could have went to make that meet and with them. And both of us would have been mm. taken out of the world right. at that time. I could have been the one that got in that car to go meet. And both of us would have been gone that day. I could have been the one that went to the hotel room to pick up the money and life could have been gone uh that day uh it was just his mercy was so heavy upon me i tell him that all the time when i visit and i say i look back at the ones that i call friends and i say how did i consider them friends <laughs> yeah right you know what was right. it that i saw mm -hmm. that i would say i trust somebody who ate at the same table with me and my family, and that same person would come in there and hold my family hostage. What was it that I saw that made me think that they were friends that I could trust? What was the works? When all I saw or what was, was inside evil of them works. that you didn't see. Right. Evil yeah. works yeah, that we done, that all of us done. And yet, it was in my mind I can trust them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's amazing how his mercy, you know, when I read the scripture, you have mercy on who he wants. I, I, it, it, it makes me tremble sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. and all I can do is say, thank you, Yahweh, for your mercy. You know, it becomes so important to be able to be, have the gift of discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a, an event recently, well, maybe a little over a year back, about a year and a half ago, where I'm not going to get into specifics, but somebody was a friend of somebody else came to me and asked me if they could borrow money. Mm -hmm. And they came and we sat and we talked for a little bit. I knew the person. I wouldn't say they were a friend. They were more of an acquaintance, mm -hmm. but they were really good friends with somebody that, that I'm close to. And the whole conversation was fine for about 45 minutes or so. We talking. And finally the conversation kind of came to a close and I went and I handed the person money. And he said, I'll get you the money back the next month. You know, I said, if you can do it, that's fine. If not, you can take a little time to do that. 
But the interesting thing is, as soon as I said that, mm -hmm. there was a complete state change on that person. Uh -huh. And I looked into his eyes, and, I, and in that moment, I said, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Because this man came in here on, as, supposedly as a kind of friend, but he came under false pretenses. Mm -hmm. And once he got the money in his hand, the truth of why he was here and what he was going to do was evident to me. Mm -hmm. It took a year and a half to track that man down to get that money back. And I won't go into the whole story about it. There's a whole lot more to it than that. But the bottom line is he has since shown himself to the other person that was a longtime friend of his that he's a fraud and he's a shyster. Mm -hmm. Now, why couldn't have Yahweh shown me that up front about a so-called friend, so to speak? Okay. And I think because there's a lesson involved. And Yahweh always had my back anyway on it. I don't ever really worry about that. And what it did do was exposing him because I reamed him out for about 20 minutes. I demanded that he tell me what possessed him to do what he did. And he refused to do that. Hmm. So I said, after 20 minutes, I sent him on my way because I want to waste my time with him no more. But what it did do is this other person that I'm close to got to see this person for what they were and how I handled the situation. See, the bottom line is sometimes Yahweh allows certain things to happen for reasons that are beyond you because it's a witness to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But you can't plot that in advance. You can't orchestrate those things. No. But that's why you got to be in tune to the Ruach so that when the Ruach is leading you, you get, it, you get to know where it, eventually it's going to go and what lesson you're going to get out of that. Mm -hmm. So... The point of all these discussions is that there's a lot of different dynamics and a lot of different ways these things plays out. And I'm trying to pull in different things from different angles um, to show just how diverse some of these things are and how they can be handled at times. So anyway, that's why I brought that up. Anything else you want to bring into this one? No, sir. Okay. Uh, verse 9. But you shall surely kill. You shall surely kill with deadly intent for destruction of him. Your hand shall be first against him to put him to death and afterward the hand of all the people. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that translate in your mind to a New Testament dispensation? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't, I, I, I really can't. Um, I know for a fact, I'll put it like this. My minister in South Carolina would say it mean whenever he see cut them off or kill, it mean to oh, do okay. exactly that. That's a way to look know? at it. But uh, in in this way, uh, I think Paul wrote to the the church at Corinth that um, you turn such a one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Right. You know. Right. Um, um, you 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 want to destroy a spirit. It's That's not right. the person. That's it's right. It's the spirit within the person. That's right. And you can only destroy it with what we call the sword. And that's the word. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it cuts, it destroys, it kills, you know. And if it don't, if it don't die, then there's nothing new that can be born in there. He had to kill the old person on the inside so that this person that sits here today can live. You know, and, and it's probably many ways that we can look at it. But for me to uh, for me to process it, that's the simplest way that I can look at it. It's like you have to. In order for something new to live, something old has to pass mm -hmm. away. Uh, um, Paul wrote also in Corinthians, old things are passed away. All things are new. It has to be. I was crucified with Mashiach. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Mashiach lives in me. Right. In the life that I live now in the flesh, I live according to Ben Yahweh, the son of mm -hmm. Yahweh. Hmm? Yeah. Who gave himself for me. Yeah, you know, um, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking of um, 
another kind of another aspect of this, mm. which is what I get out of this because it says with deadly intent for the destruction. Mm -hmm. Okay, what that says to me is is that Yahweh's not raising a, up a bunch of wimps. Mm -mm. We're supposed to be kings and priests of a royal order, a Melchizedian priesthood is yes. what we're supposed to be, yes. which are kinsmen redeemers, which goes back to what you're saying. You redeem the person, but you destroy the evil spirit that holds them captive. Yeah. Well, you know, what did Yahweh do with Israel? What Israel did was when, he, for example, I think it was the Battle of Ai with King Og. Yes. Um, they had to go in and wipe out everything. Mm -hmm. You can't be a wimp and do that. In other words, you're not supposed to have a complacent attitude when you come across somebody that has an unclean spirit that's trying to do something that's evil, you can't be complacent about it. Mm -hmm. You have got to go aggressively with the intent to destroy that unclean spirit that's holding that person captive. I've had to deal with unclean spirits and people and cast them out in times past. And there's always this element of violence that comes over you that there's an enemy in my presence and either he's going to kill me or I'm going to kill it. Mm -hmm. And there ain't no way in hell it's going to kill me. It's got to go. Yes. You know, it's like the scripture says, um, the kingdom Yahweh suffers violence. And mm -hmm. those who are violent are pressing in and seizing it by force. Mm -hmm. You've got to seize it by force. You've got to have a destructive mentality against the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. when these things come into your presence. So yes. let's go on. we got more stuff to cover. And you shall stone that is weighty with stones, a weighty stone mm -hmm. of a reddish color for building. I found that to be um, interesting wording in the Hebrew. Until he dies because he sought, listen to this, he sought with prayer to make an inquisition to entice to mislead and drive you away from Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of words right there. Mm -hmm. This person premeditatedly knew exactly what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. And it was all about getting to you and getting you out from where you are to where they want to take you. And there are people around you right now who do not have your best interest in mind. And you know that you need to be getting yourself away from them, and you need to tell them to take a hike. And they're not doing you good. They're doing you evil. And if you don't wake up to it, it's finally going to get its way with you. Your time will run out, mm -hmm. and Yahweh will pull the plug on it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I hope this is appropriate, what I'm going to say, uh, it's been pressing on me, uh, but when you said it like that, there's people that's trying to persuade you to do something that you know you know not right, and it's happening in the body, and people can read the scriptures just like you read them, and you have people proclaiming if it's in the book, I believe it. All I do is preach Bull. the book. Bull. You know, <laughs> we but say a if, lot of stuff like, you, and if, we don't. If you don't know the book, <laughs> no, uh, you don't know the writer of the book, how can you know that that person knows who is the writer? You have to get this relationship with Yeshua, right. and he'll tell you all about the Father, what mm -hmm. the Father likes and, and don't like. And I was listening to the radio the other day. I mean, it, it was comical to me because I talked back to the radio, but <laughs> that's the only that's. <laughs> That's the only thing I really have because they are opening up and reading. So yeah. I say I'd rather have some. And they, they are very positive people, well-meaning people. Sure. You know, and, and I'm not condemning them, but I just want to show how easy it is to fall for a lie. And I think the, 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 the person got to the place where he was talking about Yeshua was um, seen by 500 or more people mm -hmm. as a witness. Mm -hmm. And he said, there's, he said, you might can get five or six people to lie, but there's no way you can get 500 people mm -hmm. to sell the same lie. And I started laughing. And I'm like, wow, that sounds good, don't it? <laughs> I say, but we just came out of a season. Uh -huh. huh? This resurrection thing that they preach. <laughs> huh? Yeah, right. 
I guarantee you it's more than 500 people they believe, believe that, that. But it's not, it's not the truth. <laughs> it's not the truth. How can you get from what they call Friday evening to before Sunday get there? Three days and three nights. How can you get it? You can't. But it's more than 500 people believe that. So, I think Einstein. Like, I think Einstein said he had a mathematical equation for something like that. <laughs> he, he, somebody, somebody need to have it because uh, out of all yet. the accountants and mathematicians in this world and in that faith over there, somebody should be able to say no, that don't add up. But my point was, when if you know him and somebody's trying to entice you into it, why you think we so separated? Because we know better. We heard the voice. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. Don't do this stuff. Don't go and worship something else. That, that, that they, they ain't your friend. They ain't your brother. You stone them. Hmm? You know, you uh, kill yeah. that doctrine. You kill it if you really want the truth. Right. It dies. Right. Yeah. Somebody asked me about that the other day, actually. And I said, listen. Yeah, all of Yahweh's prophetic significant days are on feast days. Mm -hmm. The feast days are shadow pictures of these events that would happen. Okay. Now the resurrection is a big event. Sunday is not a holy day. No. It's not a feast of Yahweh. Mm -mm. So he couldn't have resurrected on that day, but that's kind of getting away yes, from yes, uh, yes. the I'm subject. Making the point. Yeah, no, yes. no. I, I Well said. Uh, okay, I read that one. Let's go ahead and do verse 31. Then the Jews, I'm sorry. So we're now going to go to John chapter 10, verses 31 through 36. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to talk about stoning for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the Jews belonging to Yehuda took up stones to stone him. Yahshua mm -hmm. answered them, many good works, virtuous in appearance. Mm -hmm. So, See it. it says you're seeing it with your eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Your eyes ain't lying. Mm -hmm. Or they're not being lied to. What you're seeing is virtuous. It's strength. It's power. Okay? I have so shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy that vilifies Elohim. And because you, being a man, make yourself Elohim. Hmm. Yahshua answered them, Is it not written and described in your law of Moshe? I, as that person. Now, <laughs> I didn't even catch this till this morning. But he's talking in past tense. He says, I, as that person in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. said you are Elohim's. Mm-mm. So he's claiming, I am the I am that said that back there. Yeah. And a lot of people, I had somebody ask me the other day about this, you know, they were shocked that the Elohim of the Old Testament is not the Father. Mm -mm. It's not the Father. How can you say such a thing? The evidence is everywhere. John 5, 37, Yahshua said, No man has seen the Father at any time, neither they heard his voice nor seen his form. Only the Son of Man testifies of the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, is, so now here's another way to look at it. I'm getting off for just a second here because this came up the other day. If the Father was the Elohim of the Old Testament, stop and think about this. That means he married Israel on Mount Horeb. Now, if the father married Israel and Israel's the bride to the father, who's the bride of the son? Mm. Legally, that makes no sense. Wake up. I can give you so many scriptures that proves that Yahshua is the rock of offense. He's called the rock mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. He's the Logos. He's the spokesperson. He's the one that came to mediate between the father and mankind. Mm -hmm. If the father came down here and dealt with Israel himself, where was the son? What did he need the son for? Because remember, there's two begotten states of the son. Mm -hmm. One before the physical creation of the earth, which I cover in the Genesis series mm -hmm. in chapter 2. Mm -hmm. And then when he came in the flesh, he was begotten again. Mm -hmm. I cover all that. Anyway, just had to throw that in there. So let's move on to verse 35. If he called them Elohim's, to whom the word, the divine expression of Messiah of Yahweh came, and the scripture cannot be broken or dissolved. 
Do you say of him whom the Father sanctified, made ceremony holy, and sent into the world, you are blaspheming? That defames because I said, I am the son of Elohim. Now, they got mad at Yahshua for making that proclamation, that he is the son of Yahweh, mm -hmm. the son of Elohim. But Yahshua says, we're the sons of Elohim also. Mm -hmm. So imagine how mad people will get when we make that proclamation, that we are the sons of Elohim. After, we, after all, the scripture says that the earth moans and groans and waits for the revealing of the sons of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Well, what is a son of Elohim? A son of Elohim is one who keeps the commandments, mm -hmm. who's led by the Ruach HaKodesh. Mm -hmm. So if it says the earth moans and groans and waits for the revealing of the sons of Elohim, what it's saying is it's waiting to reveal the ones that keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. And yet when you look in the world today, there's not many that are keeping the commandments. No, I know there's, they're out there, mm -hmm. but you don't hardly ever hear of them. Yes. But if you really want to have the true love, the summation of it is by keeping the commandments. Because mm -hmm. love cannot be perfected in you without the commandments. How can I really love my wife as my best friend and if I don't know what her commandments are? Mm -hmm. Right? She got commandments? Yes. And, I, and how can she love me if she don't know what my commandments are? Yes. Just to keep it simple on a human level. Mm -hmm. How can I really love my wife if I don't know what her commandments are? And yet we got foolish people out there saying, oh, you Hebraic roots people, you try to keep the Torah and you try to keep the commandments. All that stuff's been done away. You're under a curse. Well, the way I look at it is this way. If I study my wife and I listen to whatever her commandments are and I'm obedient to them, in theory, wouldn't I be staying out of curses mm -hmm. and trouble and contention and strife? Isn't that the kind of life you actually want? Where you have peace and harmony and shalom and prosperity? Why would you want to trade lawlessness for obedience? So it doesn't make any sense. If you want to understand love, Yahweh is showing you through the commandments what love is. Yes. How to love him. Yes. You can't love him like you were just saying about Easter by going on a pagan festival and saying, this is how I'm going to honor him. When he already tells you in the scriptures, don't go into the heathen nations, <coughs> inquire their Elohims, learn about them, come back into the land and say, I'm going to worship Yahweh Elohim according to the heathens. That's done away with. They told that one out. They told, oh, thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah, the I'm, I'm ignorant. Yeah, they told I'm, that page I, out. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know it didn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. I must have been reading an older version of that book. It's dead. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the enlightenment. The word, I didn't know that. The word of Yahweh is dead. Is dead. Yes. That is dead to those that want it dead. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they're going to find out that their grace isn't going to take them very far. Oh, yeah. And they're going to have a rude awakening when the hour of trial comes upon the whole earth. Yes. Verse 16, and we have known and believed that love that Elohim has for uh, us. Elohim is love and consists of it. That's what I was just saying. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what he is, watch what his commandments say. Mm -hmm. That defines his nature, his character, and what love is. And he who abides in love abides in Elohim and as a supreme divinity. And Elohim and a resting state of him. So when you keep the commandments and you abide in his love, you're in a state of rest. I don't know about you, but as I get to this age, the body needs more rest. Yes. The mind needs more rest. Yes. I don't need a whole lot of contention, or at least I don't want it. I'm going to get it anyway. But, mm -hmm. but after I get the contention, I'm going to need the rest. Mm -hmm. So I got to continue in that abiding, whatever that is. Yes. Love has been perfected and completed character among us in this. This is the definition now. That we may have boldness 
of all outspokenness in the day of judgment as a tribunal of damnation through divine Torah law. Because as he is, which he is the Torah law, that's what he is, because mm -hmm. it came from him, it didn't come from anybody else, so are we in this world. Mm -hmm. So he's Torah law in the heavenlies, uh -huh. we're Torah, Torah law representation the on the earth. Mm -hmm. Can't get rid of it. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. There is no fear in love, but perfect through growth in mental and moral character of love, cast out with violence fear. So you got to grow in this thing. Mm -hmm. it, I think a lot of people just get the idea that once you get immersed in the water, that somehow you just come up in this perfect love. Everything's peachy and rosy. Everything's exactly the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And boy, you don't know that you're in for a life of hell. Mm -hmm. Real hell. Because you're going to be putting this flesh through hell. Because mm -hmm. this flesh is going to have to get cut up so many different ways and bleed and get beaten so many different ways to get the flesh out of you. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Because fear involves torment that stems from punishment. So fear comes from punishment. Mm -hmm. So when you have fear, it means you're being punished. Mm -hmm. Because there's some aspect of love in your life that has not yet been perfected where the spirit of fear has wiggled its way inside of you. So the punishment now is the torment. And so if you've got torment, that's evidence mm -hmm. that fear or the lack of enough love has not been perfected yet. Mm -hmm. I can't say I'm there. No, sir. I can't say I'm there. I'm being honest. I can't say I'm there. Mm -hmm. I can say I've come a long way. Yes. It's come a long way. It's like this, this, this virus we were talking early that's gone around all over there. Not mm -hmm. one time did Yahweh allow the spirit of fear to come to me. He says, mm -hmm. you go on and you do what you got to do. I don't care how many bodies you see dying around you. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to touch you. Mm -hmm. Praise Yahweh. I could feel the spirit of fear yes. coming against me, mm -hmm. trying to get inside and take me over and succumb to that spirit like everybody else is mm -hmm. that was around me. Mm -hmm. But he didn't allow it. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't allow it either. I had a say in the matter. Yes. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So I say this, you can only love another person to a degree that you love yourself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this also, we haven't really touched on it too much. <coughs> a lot of it comes down to how do you see that you love yourself? Mm -hmm. How do you define that? You know, and, and and maybe that's a whole nother discussion altogether, unless you got something you want to add to that. No but that's sir. a whole nother deep level altogether. Mm -hmm. You know, that is deep. And, it, and it ain't about indulging yourself with the luxuries of this world. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that. I'm going to experience this. I'm going to experience. Uh, yeah, that's love, but it could also be lust. Mm -hmm. I don't, that's not what he's getting at, but that's right. a kind of a whole nother story. But the whole point is, if you hate yourself. You're going to have a hard time loving other people mm -hmm. unless Yahweh steps in supernaturally and he makes some kind of a provision that makes you to help another person anyway, even though you hate yourself. And I've seen that happen, you know, but that's that's kind of a whole nother discussion as well. So in verse 19, it says we love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. So we can't do this on our own. This mm -hmm. has to be something that, that like yeah, you said yeah. from the beginning, mm -hmm. he reached down to you in prison mm -hmm. and he lifted you out of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Father. Yeah. First John 4, verse 16 through 21. Quickly, it says, if anyone says, I love Elohim and hates his brother, he is a liar. Mm -hmm. For he who does not have love, does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love Elohim who he has not seen? I get Christians that badmouth me on the web. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, this person has no clue, first of all, what he's arguing about. He's completely ignorant. 
but the viciousness in which the person is giving me the tongue lashing comes from, if you want to claim that you're a Jesus-loving Christian, show me where the love is in your language. Mm -hmm. When you slander, you twist my words around into something else. That is murder. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But you can't expect them to understand that because they don't keep the commandments anyway. So they haven't been trained by the commandments to learn how to have proper uh, character and love towards another person. Mm -hmm. But this is what I see all the time. And, I, and as an elder, I have to shake my head. This person has no clue as to what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. First of all, their accusation of what they're saying is completely off base. It's wrong in its premise. But then the viciousness of what you say shows me you're of the child of the devil. And, and it, it shows the fulfillment of scripture. How that he said that um, it's going to people, people going to uh, stone you, crucify you. They're going to do it anyway. They think they're doing Yahweh yep. a service. That's exactly they what they're doing. They think they're doing a good thing right. by that. But I can understand you thinking you do a good thing, but study. Right. Study to see if it's right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, rightly divide the truth. L look and see if he's telling the truth. If, am, I, am I condemning him for the truth? Uh, condemning him for the evil that he's doing? Just uh, that's, that's how we started out this thing. Mm -hmm. it, this is love manifesting itself through the truth. And you said it yourself. Truth sometimes might come hard. Or it might seem like it's coming from a hard place. But it's coming from a place of love because some people need that right. forcefulness right. to really get their attention. Right. And, 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 and um, before you bash, I just put it out there, before you bash, before you condemn, before you go into your theology, seek the truth. Remember what Mark says? Mark says, be careful how you judge. Mm-hmm. Lest it be judged back to you and then some. Yes. And boy, I've seen a whole lot of people pay the price for doing yes, that. Yes, it's measured. It's just, it's it's uh, immaturity mm -hmm. is, is at the end of the day. When I look at it, I see it as this is an immature person. Oh, praise him. Um, okay, verse 21. And this commandment from an authoritative prescription, we have from him that he who loves Elohim must also love his brother. Yes. So that concludes the scriptures that we wanted to cover today. And uh, so now we're in the section of closing comments. What closing comments do you got? Well, uh, it's how two, would you sum it all up? It's 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 two points I want to make uh, in closing, and I pray, I really pray, you know. And you brought them out in your scriptures. Uh, which good work hmm. do you stone me for? Do you seek to kill me because I tell you the truth? And in 1 John, he says, He that say he know me and keeps not my commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Visit these scriptures and then look at, just listen to the presentation and see that this is a commandment of love. And I believe, I just believe that it's going to penetrate. It's going to penetrate. It's going to go out to accomplish what it was sent out to do. It's not going to return void. And I sit here humbly, and I, I'm, I know John does too. And we just reach out, and we, 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 we reach out, and we stretch out our hands and friendship but what's been commanded is been commanded and we cannot go against it it have to tell you the truth as it has been revealed to us and it's only through love um i would say for me um there's a lot i could say but i don't want to belabor it too long mm -hmm. In the world that I see around me right now, I think this kind of message is important mm -hmm. because <clears throat> there's a lot of people, you know, scripture said the wicked will continue to do more wickedness. Yes. And 
that's a given. You're just going to see more and more wickedness. And unfortunately, the times that we're in right now, or fortunately, depending on what side of the fence you're on, um, you're going to see some people begin to change for the better, become more conscientious. You see a lot of good people out there going around. They're helping other people. They're feeding people who can't get food or they're shut up in their houses or whatever. And they're, they're helping nurses and doctors and the police and, and all. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So it shows that the heart of those people mm -hmm. is, is good, you know. But you also see a lot of more wicked people that are doing things that are even more wicked than before. Like you're saying, you've seen uh, examples where they go into the grocery store and they start sneezing all over the food on purpose. Mm -hmm. And they got to wipe out all that food, those vegetables or fruits, they sneeze all over because they want everybody else to catch whatever they got. Mm -hmm. uh, this is intentional. Um, but I really believe that somewhere out there, there's more people that, are being led in the same direction that we're being led in. Yes. And we've been talking for a long time. Where are these people? Mm -hmm. Where are they hanging out at? Because it's rare that I find one. But yet I know they're out there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping, like you, that these discussions that we have, whatever subjects they may be, is a place for them to sit down in the comfort of their home and watch something like this. Mm-hmm. And say, now, where have those guys been? Because yes. like them, I've been looking for people and I haven't been able to find them. And here they are on my TV right now. Yes. You know? Yes. And I'm just not seeing this thing coming together, yet I know the scripture says it's got to come together. Mm -hmm. And so like you, I believe that sowing this seed, at some point this thing's going to take off and more and more people will be joining up. And like I said before, you know, if you have subjects that you want to talk about, you know, shoot us a line. We'll look at it. Yeah. And whether we do it right away or later on, you know, we'll take a look at it. And um, with that being said, I want to belabor it too long. I, I just pray that this message has been a blessing to those who watch out there and that you share it around with other people. Yes. And if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, <laughs> give us a thumbs down. Or you can subscribe and keep a watch out so that when more of these things come out, you'll get alerted to the fact that a new one has come out. And um, that's pretty much all I got to say. You got anything else? One seal. Yeah, go ahead. One thing I think is seal it. It's uh, two events that happened. Uh, the Queen of Sheba traveled miles to see Solomon's temple. And in the book of Matthew, it's in all three Gospels, I believe, uh, Yeshua says, it's one here greater than Solomon. Mm. And I started out with my testimony about the book of Jonah. That's another testimony that um, the people of Nineveh, will rise up in judgments against this right, generation. Right, right, right. Hmm? He said, but there's one here greater than Jonah because none of us repented. Right. What sign are you looking for? What sign are we looking for to say we need to repent? Yeah, what more do you need? What more? Yeah. One greater than Jonah, one greater than Solomon has already came and poured his love out and laid his life down. And this is the foundation that we're building on. But if you don't believe in his commandments, how will you believe in him? Mm -hmm. So my prayer is that the word of truth be your seal, that no more deception enter in. Just we all stay focused on what's true. No matter how hard it is, we got to receive it. No matter how difficult the way it may be, we got to hold on to it and embrace it. And I bless the name of Yahweh. And I give thanks to John and I pray the blessings rest upon this house. The blessings of Yahweh continue to shower him and prosper him and his family and all that associated with him. I've been so blessed through him to right now, I'm just joyful, joyful just to be sitting here, 
joyful to see his wife smile, joyful to see Sharon's face. I'm so joyful and blessed that I just pray, I pray, and I know it will manifest itself as we say in the Shema. May his countenance shine upon us and may he be gracious to us and continue to give us his shalom, his peace. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, that is my prayer. Amen. Amen. So with that said, thank you for joining us in this time through the eyes of an elder, and we look forward to seeing you the next time. And shalom, peace, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach.